it's my pleasure to welcome the MD of Mushroom, um, who likes, uh, likes Emily Fraser. Emily, how are you doing this afternoon? Hello. Because it's afternoon in Nigeria. And uh, my first question is about the championship, the pool back championship. Um, I know we're still going to go there. I, I just saw one lady amongst men during the championship. <laughs> We're, what is responsible for that? No. I'm going to ask you. We're, uh, we're obviously, we're live here in uh, Milton Keynes for Championship League, Paul. Uh, we've actually had three women yeah, compete in the event. It's, uh, we have seven groups, uh, one group per day, and we actually had Kelly Fisher, uh, Christina to catch, and Jasmine Alshan, who all played in groups one, group four, and group seven. Um, but Kelly Fisher did exceptionally well um, and she she held her own in all of the groups and uh, it's been a really good showcase of women's pool in this event, um, which we're really excited about. And a lot of fans have gone crazy for it. They've really enjoyed uh, having the, the ladies in this event. And that's that's what the great opportunity is about Championship League, that we've been able to introduce it. Was it, was it deliberate because, uh, or oh, it was just circumstantial? Because uh, I've seen ladies among men, and uh, one would have expected that it should be different categories, but seeing them play the men, um, was it deliberate or was it just uh, the result of circumstance? Uh, yeah, we make all of our matching pool events open, um, just like for the US Open World Pool Championship, uh, the World Pool Masters. Uh, we had um, Kelly Fisher and Han Yu compete for it uh, in 2019. So we wanted to make this open as well um, and having those three ladies represent their countries um, for this event was, was fantastic. And like I said, all three of them really held their own uh, amongst their matches and in a race to five format, um, it's even more exciting. So they did really, really well. And um, we're really pleased that we've done it. Okay. Uh, maybe at this point also I can ask my, my colleague to also ask you any questions. Here in Africa, uh, there's one opportunity we have had we have had to watch some of the top players uh, in the world when it comes to pool play. And uh, for us, it was novel, it was interesting. So far, I think um, I would tell uh, Matchroom Multisports, and that's Matchroom in particular, I'll tell you, well done, well done. You've done a great job. And um, uh, the, only, the only issues we have is that we do not have Africans. We do not have any African there. So somehow it just leaves a little bit of taste on our lips. Um, what can Matchroom do to help Africa come to speed, especially giving us an opportunity to play in such a big tournament? And I know for this year, uh, Matchroom Pool will be holding quite a number of tournaments. Yeah, so Championship League Pool obviously is just the 19 players in the event. So already um, quite a small pool of players that we obviously can invite. Um, but I think what's great is looking ahead to the World Pool Championship, which we have uh, scheduled for the beginning of June. So what we do is we work with the WPA. They give us the list of um, federations that we should be contacting and we work through the allocations of those. So we will be writing to the AAPA to say these are the number of allocations that you get uh, for the World Pool Championship. Who would you like to send? How would you like to do that? And I think... Obviously, this is the first year that we've taken the World Pool Championship on. Um, so it's, it's very uh, early. It's, you know, it's very new to us. We haven't done this before. I know we did it um, years and years ago, but it's certainly first thing for, for myself and, and for our team here. So, but we're definitely looking to work with all of the federations and um, everyone across the world to obviously get a global um, invitation list for the event. So again, it's still the first year and it's and June is only just around the corner. Lots of restrictions in place for travel at the moment. Um, but we do hope to grow that list and to make sure it's a, you know, an international field of players. I know you guys also, one of the things I've seen, uh, the championship and I've seen some um, sponsors and uh, 
you know, are you copying this? Uh, you know, at this time, are you copying? You know, trying to get you know, sponsorship and trying to drive the game when you know everything seems to be um, on the low. Yeah, it's it's very difficult. I think uh, one of the only events that really sort of took place in the pool on in the pool world as such was. Uh, the big uh, Predator 10 ball event last March in Vegas, where it all came to a, a stop there. And then obviously the Moscone Cup last December. So, you know, there's there's no pool happening at the moment. And a lot of our, you know, trade sponsors were suffering quite heavily because, you know, everything went into shutdown. And uh, now again, um, people are, you know, taking, getting their tables at home and, you um, everyone's sort of on lockdown and we're sort of getting back into things but you know sort of echo on what Matt said earlier about it it's just we're just trying to get um as much as we can out there and obviously championship league four we've been seeing uh, 24 matches a day for now eight days so everyone at home who's been just waiting for any live pool we've obviously just been churning it out for them so we're really excited about that but it's been quite full on here for everyone. So I think we're just trying to wait for the event to finish and then focus for the next. Um, but I'm very excited about the World Pool Championship because I think that's a new one again for us. And we've never really worked with um, assigning federations allocations for the events. And I think that to echo what Matt said earlier, to start these relationships and to be able to give opportunities to all of the players around the world into the event is also um, something great that we can do. Looking forward to things like the US Open, we held qualifiers around the world, you know, with local um, promoters and things like that. So again, it's having those relationships and being able to talk about that and how we can move it forward. Yeah, you just made mention of working with federations um, as well as, did I hear you say you can also work with promoters because, for example, uh, we have uh, Pool Players Alliance too. If they come forth and they're willing to work with you guys, will you be also willing to work with them? Yeah, on the US Open uh, for... Oh, oh get confused as to what the year was uh, the first year of the us open that we held in uh, vegas in 2019 uh, we worked with different associations and promoters you know from new zealand australia across the world and um in the uk as well to look at qualifiers that they held to obviously give per, uh, players the uh, the opportunity to play in the us open it's 256 players so it's a, a large build that we sold out um, we are looking to do, obviously hold the event again later this year, uh, which is still early days. But again, that's an opportunity where we can start making conversations uh, for moving forward. All right. Let's just go on a break and, uh, because uh, we, we want to quickly put things together here and we'll be back with you shortly. Sporting events should not be held until there are no new cases. Well, that's right up there with the heat. No crowd, but who needs them? Just in terms of pure talking ability, it's just one of the best we've ever seen. Oh, my word. Incredible. What a how packed partnership it is. Stop the engraving process. 